Put the four one, minute one in there while we handle this first. Right. This Let's one. handle this one first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Find a four minute one. Go Down ahead. off Elmo dancing if the motherfucker he has an address on my son motherfucker TV. Honey, can we give the pandering a break? Like seriously, as a cisgendered heterosexual woman, I am so embarrassed for you right now. Cause you have literally been on my timeline, reinforcing homophobia with the expectations of being accepted by homophobic people. Honey, are you okay? They don't like you either, butch queen. Do you really think because you say the things that they believe in that that makes you different? Have you been told by too many homophobic people that you, I like gays like you, I don't like, girl. And how you go from saying that gay men shouldn't be having or raising sons to saying that Billy Porter need to get off your son TV? Like, how, how did you get a son? Were you down low? You had to be down low because you're so heteronormative that I know you don't believe in being bad. And that really explains your personality. Like, it's very obvious that you've harbored shame for being a homosexual man for a very long time. And even after coming out and living your truth, you still internalize that shame. And that's why you don't believe that homosexual men deserve anything. They don't deserve to be on TV. They don't deserve to have families or raise families because you don't believe that's what you deserve. And I'm just so sorry. I, I'm sorry that you got to suffer like that, hun. I pity you. I really do. Yes. Well. What's going on? What's the tea? What's going on? What's, going what's the tea, babe? Hello, how you doing? Hey, so, okay, so introduce I, I, yourself. I, I, I want to hear from Craig had a lot. I want to hear Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on wait, don't, don't, come, don't come in here high. <laughs> hold on, wait. You hear from me? I want you to introduce All yourself. All I said was hello. Be I know, said hello. I want you to introduce yourself to the people. Tell them who I, you is. I am the lovely Bambino Talks of TikTok. That's where you can find me. Okay. Now, you've been, a lot of this stuff been going on. Put, see if we can put this side by side like this, if we can make it tight. If you do, is this might cut off Craig a little bit. No, we can scoot up like this. Right there. A lot of this stuff been going on, honey, what, what, you know, that, that video had been circulating around the internet and stuff like that, honey, and it's been a lot of, you've been getting a lot of feedback and a lot of stuff, and it made it all the way over here to the fags desk, honey, and the fags, <laughs> listen, and the fags had dissected it, and I know you had seen us, you seen the fags talk, talk about yesterday, I mean, Friday, and you was hot, Okay. Had jumped oh. in both of our Baby, you had told Craig up, honey. No, he didn't tear me up. Well, you you know, you love the doll. So you had a came. He's like, Maddie, uh uh, bitch, let me give you how it went, how it went down. So, I mean, he didn't tear me up. He just said, let me find your, your message. Uh, let me see. Uh, we, we don't already have it. Is. Uh -uh, here it is. He said, I can't believe you stuck your foot in the shoe like that today on the live. From the way you spoke, I knew you didn't really watch what I was saying, and rather you watched it before you name called. And then I said, we're filming tomorrow. You should join to clarify your point. That was it. And then you told me later that he had also messaged you. I did. So, I mean, I'm just curious because by the time we got to it, because we had been off for a while, so by the time we got to it, it had kind of cooled down. Yeah, it did. Bit. It did because we, you know, I had been out in the street. Right. So I'm curious to know first, how did you feel when you first started getting feedback from social media, and did you see the one that we played? Had you seen that woman speak? Did you see that video? I so, however, I did see her video, but when I clicked her page and I seen the following, I ignored it. <laughs> it was nothing to discuss. And then when I seen like just a lot of the backlash, I felt like it was from our own community. And I feel like with our community, we can pass licks all day. Mm -hmm. But then if you our, say something, picture out so we can get a more wider shot. Like take our yeah. No, I mean no, no, no. Back, back the camera out, baby. Oh. Uh, go ahead. Uh, be so now. we can we can throw shots all day, but when it's time for some real shit and 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 real, just real spill on things, it got to be sugar coated. That's not how I live life. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have to sugarcoat things. Um, what disturbed me the most is is that a lot of people ran with the narrative of the do rag. I'm from the projects, bitch. I'm wearing me a do rag. 
I don't I don't identify as the trade download none of that. I'm a black gay man. So you are so you so you do identify as a gay man. Absolutely. Black gay man. All right. So you your first statement was um you you got a lot of feedback and a lot of stuff from the community, right? Mm -hmm. But rightfully so because you were directing it to the community. It was about the community. It was about in particular Billy Wood or Billy Porter uh mm -hmm. being on Sesame Street and whatever. I've never seen him on there, so I don't know what he's over there doing. So I'll <laughs> say this. I'll say this for the when it, when it, when I say from the community, I say because they don't like hearing what it is is the truth. Now that I will agree with. Now, why I said you stuck your foot in the shoe <laughs> was because of this. You are a gay black man. Mm -hmm. I am a nice haircut, faces lined up. You wear nice shirts. I've seen your, your pictures. You wear blouses and things. But you still carry yourself as a black man. Yeah. When we when I spoke upon what we spoke upon, see, I'm 26, but I was raised from the old school girls. Like I said. So see, when yeah. people hear y'all say the words punks and sissies from y'all era, we know that, bitch, those are real things. Those are real motherfucking things, punks and sissies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My question that I wanted to ask you, because it was it was painted as if it, it, I don't like myself and I'm on the DL and I'm walking around hush, hush, hush. We all know, I know, Madison knows, and you know, that what we see today ain't what, ain't that is to, a little bit too much. The, the people that, let me say this, and I'm going to I'm 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 drop the mic after this one. Uh-huh. The people that the people you got the boys that is dating uh boys like Zell Swag that's dating Saucy Santana. We all know that that's not real. We all know that's what not real. Not uh. real. We all have always addressed them as clowns and boogers and faggots and sissies. You never walked around in Detroit if you was a butch queen with lashes, nails, and makeup. The girls beat you the fuck down. <laughs> It's so many. I, I'm not laughing people. at you. I'm laughing because what you're saying, there is truth to it. And it kind of goes to, I'm, 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 I'm going to go there. It kind of goes to what I was saying. I don't know if you saw the show where we were talking about the whole them and they. It kind of mm -hmm. feels like, like, like you just said, some of this, feel, oh, some, oh. some of this stuff feels at times like it's just too much. Right. So, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but go ahead. I want you to finish. I'm going to let you finish. Can you still hear us? Or something happened. I think his camera froze or freezing. Oh, he's can, okay. You there? You can you hear us? Go out and, and come, come back, back in. in. But no, but while he's coming back, but and not saying that I completely agree with that, but I understand what he's saying. It's it's interesting that he's 26 mm -hmm. and he's saying this because people from our generation and older than us have said to me, some of this shit today is just too much. I mean, Once we, upon a time, we, we it was have, just sissies and fags and yeah, that was, it, I mean, that was, sissies and dykes. And, sissies, punks, dykes, whatever. Right. And like when, we, and when, you, and when you're talking to heterosexual people, like, okay, when you're talking to heterosexual people, you're having a heterosexual people come say, they don't know about all the cisgender, transgender, this and yeah. you either punk it, but right. the, but we have progressed in time Correct. to have like these these types of conversations Correct. to Correct. move the needle forward. Correct, and to be more inclusive. Now, when we watched that video, of I I if you saw my commentary on it yesterday, a Friday, you mm -hmm. would hear me say, and you you validated what I said that you were brought up in a in a specific type of way. And so I said to you yesterday, I mean, Friday, Craig, I said, Craig, you got to understand as gays, as black gays mm -hmm. that were raised in the church, we have been, there have been so many things that have been embedded in indoctrinated. us, indoctrinated into us. And that even when we get kids or have children, we pass that stuff on down to the kids. But I do think that there, is, there are times that we do need to, to shake the table a bit now. From if if someone is talking to you and you having this type of conversation with individuals, from the from the surface, looking at it from the surface, the first thing that a person will say to you is be be Bino 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 Bino. The first thing that they will say to you Bino is, "Ooh, it's internalized homophobia," because <laughs> from the surface it is, mm -hmm. and it's because this this from my perception 
has been passed on because even with me, like you know, with with me with shit, you know, I'm like, oh, that's that's a bit too much. Because for a while here, and I'm gonna I, I may get in trouble for this, but oh the fuck well. <laughs> what? I was like, why does every five minutes we have to have a new fucking superhero that's a fag? Like, why we got to have a new fag? Huh? <laughs> Why did why every why why a new comic book coming with a new motherfucking goddamn super and bitch? We, and we ain't saying that it don't supposed to be in there. We ain't saying. I'm not saying. This, now hear me out, because I think when people heard me say Billy Porter, right? I'm a and and they they the questions went up. Well, how did you act around your son just the fuck like this? <laughs> I ain't switching up a motherfucking thing. So what because, you're saying is in the video where you're saying that you just don't believe in showing affect, like if you, I don't know if you're single or not, but are you saying that you don't show affection in front of your son? So let's let's clear this up. I did not lay down and have a baby with no woman. I've been okay. with my partner for eight years. That okay. same dream that a lot of us have where we want the family, the big house, paint this bitch, lay it out, kids, all that. I just went and made those things happen. So when I say affection, we give him a lot of affection. But that doesn't mean he see. And what I mean by laying up is cuddling, booed up, kissing. Or when I'm on the phone gossiping with my girlfriends, he don't hear that. Not so because that's I don't. What I'm asking. So do you and your partner live together? Mm -hmm. And so you're saying what I'm hearing you say is that you two never hug? I'm not talking about the son or the kid. Mm -hmm. Is it a boy or girl? Boy, it's a boy. Boy. Okay, so I'm asking with you and your partner, you never kiss in front of your son. You never do y'all sleep in the bed together? Like, do y'all? Mm -hmm. So he never has walked in the room and you're not having sex, but just in the bed watching TV. He is there's times where so when. I, when you ask that question, I feel like it's trying to be dumbed down to what do he see out <laughs> no, of the I'm bed at all. No, I'm asking for clarity. I'm asking okay. for clarity. So there are times where he will see, okay, we, we watch the TV. But I'm talking about what we see today where you have the cuddling, the 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 the, the over-affection. I got to kiss you in front of my man. I got to I gotta grope you. I got to stand behind you. We got to all take a picture with, with, with my man standing behind me. But why can't he see why that? Why can't he see? Like, if, if you're, if, listen, 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 listen. What I'm saying, and I don't know what you do. I don't know if you do social media full-time, if your partner works. But what uh -huh. I'm saying is if, if your son is having breakfast, and he's uh -huh. about to go to school. And let's just say your partner goes to work or you go to work and you're about to leave. Y'all don't kiss and say, Ari, I'll see you later. Da, da, da. Like you can't do that if he's sitting there watching. Because I'm just saying it feels like a lot of work to have to manufacture this friendship. I'm going to say, I'm gonna so say it's, it's, not a lot of, it's not a lot of work when, when, when it's not that important. Like, and what I mean by it's not that important, like, for instance, since he has came into the household, yes, things have changed. But when it comes down to affection and doing that, at the end of the day, I've seen a lot of people say it was maybe because of what has happened to me. Let's take me aside from it. All of us can sit on this platform and say our lifestyle is more dangerous than it is positive. So when I say that I don't show it to him or don't want him exposed to it, it's not because I don't want you to be that. I just feel like it's so much more important shit that needs to be taught about our lifestyle before I go showing you me kissing a man or me allowing you to wear you what you want to wear. Okay, let me just say this. See, this is where we differ and where we see. When I say we, I'm talking about me. I can't speak for Madison. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that being queer, whether you're trans, gay, bisexual, whatever, I don't believe that that's a lifestyle because a lifestyle denotes that it's a choice. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like if I golf three days a week or I went and got, or uh, if I don't go past row six on the plane, <laughs> that's a lifestyle. Or if I I'm only black, shop at Whole Foods. Foods. That's a black car. Like that's a lifestyle. Like you don't, for me, I don't believe that you choose to be gay or trans or, uh, you know, bisexual in general statements i know that in some instances sometimes people will think that they're queer because they were molested or violated sexually i'm not talking about those instances i'm talking about people who who believe and know that they were born that way 
What I'm saying is it, it, it feels like your decision to not show him any affection between you and your partner is because there's a part of you somewhere that believes that it's wrong for him to see it. And because you feel it's on some level that it's wrong for you to be gay. And so he come to me and say, hey, this is what I want to do. As me as the man, see, see, this is how I think. A man is a producer, a provider, and a protector. So before we go talking about kissing and, and sexuality and what you like, I got to have those three things instilled first. That's how I feel. But, 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 the, but, you know, but, but a man is also a lover. Mm -hmm. He's also an affectionate, compassionate. Uh -huh. A man is also a provider. He's, he's this thing. He can be all of those he's, things. He's emotionally, he should be emotionally available because yes. in this, in this, it's, and I'm not telling, we're not telling you how to parent because this mm -hmm. ultimately is the way you parent and this is your, your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're saying from the perspective of whether he's in a heterosexual household or a homosexual household, there's a, there's a lack of affection and 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 a, a lack of a display of affection in in his in the presence, and that he has to go outside and he has to see two strangers do this instead of the the parents in his in his home. And but even, is that, but but wait a second, the, so. I've never, that's my, my mother. I didn't see her laid up and kissing and cuddling and no affection with no man. Well, and why? this is why, but, but see, because you haven't even seen it, now you're passing this same thing down to your child and you from a heterosexual house. Let, let me ask you this, Bino. Was your, were, were, you said you never saw your mom have affection and stuff like that. Was your mom, were your mom and dad together long term or was she in a relationship with a man long term that you witnessed? She was with my brother and sister dad long term. Yeah. For a long term. So see, you're you're like me. My mom was in a long term relationship with my dad. I know it's not your dad, but you got to witness it. But most black men, mm -hmm. gay, straight, bi, whatever, did not have that opportunity. Most black men did not witness their mother in a long term relationship with a man because most black women are single mothers. They raise their children alone. Where mm -hmm. most men are raised either by their aunt, their mother, their grandmother. So most don't even. So that's why a lot of times when men get into relationships, black men get into relationships, whether they're straight or gay, a lot of times they don't know how to show up for their partner, whether it's a woman, whether it's a man, whether it's a trans woman. They don't know how to show up for them emotionally because they weren't given that as a child. It wasn't demonstrated for them as a child. And what I would hate to see is for mm -hmm. your son to grow up and go into the world and he become another callous, yeah, unfeeling, yes, black man who doesn't know what to do with his feelings and his emotions because he wasn't trained or taught what to do with those feelings. And I believe, I believe, I haven't done any studies, but mm -hmm. I believe that that's why so many black men, straight, gay, bisexual, whatever, mm -hmm. drop dead at 40 from a heart attack because they have all of these feelings inside that are pent up that they don't know what to do with. And it, it, and it implodes. I don't, I, I'm gonna tell you why I don't agree with that. Okay. I don't agree with that. Simply because, and not from, I don't agree with it because of, because of this. When, when he is little, mm -hmm. so he's still innocent. How old is he? He's two. Okay. So I don't, when I say what I do, I don't classify it as wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. I because it sounds feel, like it. It does sound no, it does no, sound when like When I say that. that, I don't feel as though that it's wrong. I just feel as though when they're that young, that is your time to, to guide them. However, it ain't about this, what I do in my bedroom. What I do in there when the door is closed, that's my business. But when I come out here and I'm around this bitch, I'm the dad first. And by him being a boy, now if he come and say, hey, this is what I want to do, then we're going to have another conversation. But it's, until then, I'm not going to show him my lifestyle when that ain't, okay. when that's not or maybe what what is set in stone for him. Somebody got to still show him if the, the route of how he going to go with a woman, with children, how to take care of them. Or what See, that's what I'm them. saying. I think that's instinctive. I don't think that's a decision. Whether or not he's going to be dating women or dating men, that's already decided. That's a part of his DNA. It's not about what he sees you and your partner doing. I don't. I what I'm saying is I want, I, I just want, I want you to pass on to him education, and all of that kind of stuff. But I also want yeah. you to be able to pass on to him the ability to feel. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to feel, to be able to emote, yeah. to be able to express himself. And he can do that by your demonstration. I'm mm -hmm. not saying you got to be over the top. I'm not saying he got to know who's the top and who's the bottom in the relationship and he got to hear y'all fucking. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is when you deprive him of seeing you love and your partner love, there's a piece of him that's missing. And see, it's kind of like, for no, example, I'm like, be honest, it's gonna sound I, when people used to say this, it sounds harsh, but until you got kids, you don't you really don't understand it. And I, it's a real powerful meaning behind it. It's right. You okay. really that part ain't that motherfucking important. Dot com. Like it ain't even no way around it. Because for me, even like with my friends, my lifestyle and what I do, that's not for him, whether he was a boy or a girl. That's just like if 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 I have a daughter, right? My daughter can go around and be around Maddie, but we but then you have people like Netta who playing. You're seeing so much. You see Tuck one day. You see we see it's either you're a girl or you ain't. For me, well, 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 well Bino, listen. As as LBGTQIA people, we're still. Uh, ostracized no matter how much we try to assimilate or no matter how much we try to you know blend in we're going to always be checked in the box as other because as you can see this comment down here says Lisa Carol White Lloyd said having a child is man and woman that's normal so if two men can't have babies it's out of the norm just keep things simple so from, yeah. from reading this comment this person yeah. doesn't even feel that you should have a yeah. child. They have. It, there's a. There are a lot of opinions that people say. Like, it, it's a lot of things that I still experience in this in today with just doing what I'm doing. You have things like Mother's Day and daughter to us dances, and bitches want to know, you know, different things like that. Stuff do happen, and people do have their opinions. But I feel like when it boils down to what a kid is supposed to be exposed to, right. My bedroom business ain't, ain't ain't it, and I respect that because I feel like as as queer people, you know, I think that sexuality on the entire spectrum should be withheld. You know, we have ki we have parents that are grooming their kids. Of oh, he's so cute. He gonna have look how he look how he, he got all, all the girls. Look how he already got all the girlfriends. Look how look how she already got a little boyfriend. I think that that should be kept away from children. And that's why Maddie, let me, Maddie, let, me ask have you a, let me women. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Maddie. Yes, if you if 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 you was blessed with a child uh -huh. as a transgender woman, uh -huh. and and you are very friendly, you have different friends, you involve yourself with different things in our community where you everybody loves you. You mean to tell me as a trans woman, you want your your child, our mom. Uh -huh. You mean to tell me that there are certain, not people, but the way they dress it up. There are certain people and images you mean to tell me that you're not going to Police? Have, an, it, have an issue with her seeing. Here's the thing. Um, we, we've been children before mm -hmm. and we've been told not to do something. And, and, mm -hmm. and as much as our parents told us not to do something or not to go in there and not to touch it, we went after it anyway. Mm -hmm. We weren't explained why don't touch it. You, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We I weren't explained like why don't touch it or why you can't go in. It was like, don't go in that room. Don't mm -hmm. touch that thing. If you put your hands in, I'm going to beat your ass. It's don't touch this because this is, this is hot. This will burn you. This is different. Or don't mm -hmm. go in that room because this is where adults go. You're not old enough to go in that room. When you're old enough to go in that room, I'll let you in that room. The door is locked. So I think that what we lack as LBGT and straight people when it comes down to trying to educate kids, I think we lack the, the taking the time out to explain what the difference is. Like things are different. Like differences. We don't want to distinguish, you know, because... We come in, we just just like I know we see Miss Netta, we see Charles, we see me, we see we see all the rest, we see Santana, we see this. So we have to have these conversations with the kids. Sometimes we got to pick a time out to have because like, well, mommy, what's that? And we don't need to be harsh with it if it's something that we feel some type of way because 
growing up, not my mama didn't do it, but there were men around me that's like, oh, them, them fags. Mm -hmm. they, they like this. Mm -hmm. they, they stay away. And so it, it, it becomes embedded in you like that these people are wrong or, they, or, 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 or you treat these people some type of way and you really don't have any, you really don't know why. Because if you ask a lot of people today why they don't like gay people or why or why or why they did or why they don't even like if you ask white kids, why don't you like black? I don't know why. I just my mama told I don't I don't supposed to. We're not supposed to. Uh -huh. Instead of we sitting down and really having these conversations. And I think that people are relying on on. I'm just trying to remember my thought because I'm going to lose it. People are relying on television to educate the kids. Are they relying on things to educate the kids instead of really sitting down, taking out time and moments to really say, all right, let's talk. Now, at two, I get what you're saying about protecting the innocence because I do feel that protecting the innocence of kids is very, 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 very important because I feel that for me, um, I never was molested. I wasn't touched. None of those things didn't happen to me. But I feel like when I got into sex work, to survival sex work, my innocence and my perception of things totally completely changed about a lot of shit. And so mm -hmm. now that I have the, the platform to talk to people about it, I never steer people into going into sex work or anything or, or, or even when I got body work and shit done. I, I steer people away from doing the shit under the table because it's just like this can be harmful to you. But I think that you have to sit down and you have to have conversations, the hard conversations that you, you want to have, you don't want to have with kids. You got to sit down and be like, all right, let's talk today. Let's talk about differences. Go ahead, Chris. So you don't lose but not at two. Not, not at two. two. Not right now. Because not, 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 not now. Not at not now. But two. I, think, I think that we're kind of talking about two different things we're talking about sex and affection those are see, two different things I'm, I'm, I see you is for the people you is for the no people. no no because no because what i'm saying is what i'm saying is i am i agree that children shouldn't be witness of certain things witness to certain things set things whether it's sex or whatever but i don't think him seeing you and your partner demonstrate affection is the same as him witnessing you having sex and then as far as the whole thing like to your point about white kids who sometimes are racist towards black kids and they don't know why mm -hmm. it's not always because they hear their parents saying that nigga that coon that monkey that whatever it's sometimes the behavior that they're paying attention to they're paying to paying attention to their energy and so similarly even if you and your partner never touch or kiss in front of him, he still pays attention to the energy and the way that your connection is. For example, when I first told my mom that I was gay, I was dating a guy and he said to me, why don't you just tell her we're friends? Because he wasn't clocky. He wasn't clocky. Mm -hmm. And she said, he said, just tell her we're friends. And I said, well, absolutely not because there's energy between us. Mm -hmm. She can see the energy, even if you never touch me to say, hey, let me get that plate right there. Even if you never touch me, she's going to see the energy. And, and so that's what I'm saying about this. And the same thing happens with racism and other implicit biases that we carry because we all have implicit bias. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. And so you got to keep in mind when a, when a lot of these clips surf, surface around, it's only a snippet. Mm -hmm. When I say when I and also when I say certain things, it don't it don't come from a place of hatred it's also about who you date too yeah like for instance my other half is not okay. feminine or flamboyant you okay. know what i'm saying i'm probably the, the really just the one <laughs> i get really it the one. I, I, really the I understand one. what you're saying and and so when when i say we don't kiss it's not because i don't get mad because i get mad i'm gonna get, get mad it ain't that we don't it's just that when you become a parent, you find the time to be able to. I just have found the time to be able to separate the two where I'm still happy and I'm still able to do me when I do it. But then I'm a parent all 24 hours of the day. Right. I, but I want to understand going. more about your point about the Billy Porter thing. I want to say Billy Woodruff. Billy yeah. Porter thing, when you said you don't want him to see Listen. Billy Porter on, on Sesame Street. Because my point is this. There were white people who didn't want to see niggas on TV either. 
I'm going to tell you why, though. And there are white people who still don't want to No, but I'm going to tell you why, because I wanted to, this is what really struck a nerve with me with you. I don't know if you watch, uh, it's a lady on my TikTok. Her name is Ashley Cathias, or Kathy or something like that. Okay, I and don't she's think She's a 30-year-old transgender woman. Mm -hmm. She's detransitioning. Okay. You got Dwayne Wade, who's doing, I, would, I think what he's doing is amazing. Mm -hmm. He's doing what the community want him to do, support, right? What I meant by that and why I feel like it shouldn't be showed to kids is because we put them in dresses and heels and hair and we don't tell them about the real lifestyle for real. How they treat you. See, I'm not talking from a standpoint of judging somebody. I'm talking from a standpoint because, bitch, I wore heels, hair, nails, wigs, and dresses. P pause right there. Can you pause? Do you remember yesterday? I mean, Friday when I said. I want him to say that again. Yeah, after I said. Well, say it again. I don't talk from a standpoint of judging them. I talk from the standpoint of bitch. I wore hair, nails, wigs, and dresses. Of receiving, you you talking from a standpoint of receiving? Of receiving, basically experience. Here we go. Remember yesterday. Remember Friday when I said most people don't want their children to be gay, or most people don't want that that experience to be for their kids, or people they love them because they either know how they treat them, mm -hmm. how they've treated them. Or how you know they I treat you? The I came out at thirteen. I know you remember this too. My gay mother was Courtney Purvis. Oh my God, Courtney! You remember me? Yeah, long, long time ago. Yes. So I've seen the lifestyle. I've seen from just the girls. I grew up around a lot of the girls. Mm -hmm. too. So I've seen a lot of just how people talk to them, how people treat them, or how I talk from what I experience. And that's where a lot of that comes from. So no, I wouldn't want my kid to go through none of that because overall, you you can talk until you blue in the face, Craig. It's still going to be people that's going to say, I'm going to have an opinion, a comment, or feel like I shouldn't even have a baby. You know yeah, what like, that, like, so like that lady who like just... The lady yeah, there, you know lady what I'm So it's like... But yes, I don't, I don't, it's because of really what I went through. You don't want that for your kids. Right. You know, when the first thing you got to think about, I, I never forget when I came out, my mama said, she said, um, I'm going to go get some insurance. I got to go get insurance. Bitch, if the first thing you got to go do is get some insurance because your kid is living a lifestyle, certain kind of motherfucking way, I don't want that for my kid. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. But the gag is we need to have insurance on our children anyway, yeah. whether they're gay or yeah. straight. But that was the first thing. So to hear that, I'm thinking, bitch, oh, you want some money, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I think that I think your experiences, and that's basically what I've been saying. I think your your experiences inform how mm -hmm. you're raising him, and in in, in, ter in terms of your stance on this whole thing. But he will know. The thing is this. He will know that he has a gay black father. Mm -hmm. That's something that he will know. But I'm a in due time. Him. In due and time. I'm a teacher to him. So when a bitch say you a fan, your daddy a fan, your daddy this year, he's already gonna be educated. He's gonna know what those right. words are. But you he's just saying not at, you just saying not at two. Not at two. Got it. Bino, listen, I thank you for coming on. And I thank us for thank, thank you for you. having us for, for us having a a, a a healthy, dialogue. a healthy dialogue because it it unpacked, yes. it unpacked a lot of the things that I was saying the other day on the show. Like this stuff has been embedded in mm -hmm. him, and this stuff has come down in because of his own experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now mm -hmm. the now the now the, cor the now the <laughs> you're not gonna like the correct term, <laughs> but the correct term for all of that is internalized homophobia. homophobia. You know and, what? And, and, and we when can you heal break it down though. When you, it, when that, you... that is the correct term. And we can heal from that because all of us in here, including Mo, well, he's not a homosexual, but but how you gonna promote and, and instill it into a kid and you live in you in an apartment? That be the part. They be on Mac and B Week in the hood, but they put the dress on the kid. You in the hood promote and put the dress on your kid. It's set up for bad stuff. You living in an apartment in the hood with Billy Porter. So now your son, he in the projects in the hood, right? With Billy Porter bouncing around the hills and nails. 
Child, I, I'm with you when you write. You ain't all the way right on this. Let Billy Porter have her job, but I don't need to see Billy Porter on the motherfucking Sesame Street either, goddamn. But you know, I could have been on the Sesame Street saying, hey, B, you know, but that, listen, I'm joking here and that. But we will, I I, I'd like to talk more with you in depth later on. Me and Craig would like to talk. Craig does one on ones. You know, Craig be doing these healing sessions where he try to <laughs> heal the girls, heal the girls. You know, from a lot of the, the traumas and stuff that we go through, because we as Black LBGTQIA people, we're traumatized by a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. We're traumatized just for being yeah. Negro, for being Negro. Yeah, but I think that trauma we carry it into our our friendships. Yeah, I think we carry it into our relationships, especially. Um, and I think sometimes we don't recognize that it's there. You know what I mean? Because it's so much a part of us because we've lived it for so long, like however long. I was trapped in the closet, or she, or you, or whatever. I think we carry that with us. But and I was never trapped. I was trapped in between a man's I, legs. I, well, I was trapped. I was never trapped. <laughs> but yeah. So trapped. we, so Pino, listen. This is what we're gonna do. I'd like, I'd like for us to continue our conversation more, but like offline, so that we can like really key. And I, and I, so we can have our our Courtney. Uh, memory because uh -huh. uh -huh. she and I had a really good time in Vegas like yes. years and years ago. We hung out deeply in Vegas, you know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I remember a lot. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we'll talk. I'm gonna give you my. I'm gonna inbox you my number, and other, but I want you to stay tuned to the show. I, I think I definitely. We here. We here. Thank we you, here. my baby. Thank you so much. We gotta get Bye. done. Thank we you. Got, Thank you. Down and like, do it, bitch. I got out of here. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go to the next story here that we were talking about because we're gonna save our last story for last, okay? But that you don't need a video for that. But let's go here. Let's do this. This right here. Thank. And people weren't such dumbasses, such dumb. I wanna before we go into that, Craig. Did you have any final thoughts for Bino? Oh no, 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 I didn't. You didn't. I didn't. All right, 